Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Krishpa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hari Hari. We're reading the Nectar of Devotion and we're on Chapter 1 Characteristics of Pure Devotional Service. So we'd heard about how devotional service gives immediate relief from all types of material distress and how it's the be beginning of all auspiciousness. Now, now we're on the section dealing with how devotional service uh, gives happiness, ha that, that, and the highest happiness is happiness in Krishna consciousness. So Rupa Goswami is giving evidence from different scriptures describing how this is how the happiness of devotional service is very great. So he has a quote here from the Hari Bhakti Shudodaya, where it is stated that Prahlad Maharaj prayed to Lord Nasringadev. Lord, no, Prahlad Maharaj is a great, a great devotee and he's offering his prayers to Lord Nishingadev who is a Vishnu avatar in the form of half lion, half man. Lord Nishingadev is a very, very important incarnation of the Lord and it signifies protection for the devotees. Lions are very, they're very fierce to, the, to their enemies, but they're very gentle to their own cubs. So in a similar way, Lord Nishringadev is very ferocious to the demons, but he is very gentle to the devotees. So, 
and on your mind. So Lord Nishinga Dev, oh, rather Prahlad Maharaj prayed to Lord Nishinga Dev that he says, My dear Lord, I repeatedly pray unto your lotus feet that I may simply be stronger in devotional service. So by hearing the prayer of Prahlad Maharaj, we learn how a pure devotee of Krishna should offer prayers to the Lord. We often think the Lord is just simply there to supply whatever we need. And we will pray to the Lord, oh, give me this, oh, take away that. Oh, help me in this situation. We'll pray to the Lord for so many material things. But the devotees, the pure devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, they simply pray to be stronger in devotional service. Prahlad Maharaj prays, he says, May my Krishna consciousness be more strong and steady. And Prahlad Maharaj says, I know that happiness from Krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that I can have all the other perfections. I can have anything else just simply by Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Yeah, there are perfections in terms of religiousness and economic development and sense gratification and even liberation. So in, in material life, the people talk about, about these four things. They're very concerned with religion, but when they speak of religion, it, they're thinking of material religion. Yeah, they want they take up some material religion to satisfy their material desires. And to give them all the things which they need in their material life. So people are gener generally religious for the purpose of economic development. And when they get economic development, it means they have more money and they'll use that money for sense gratification. And 
and then after satisfying a person, after a person has satisfied their senses for some time, then he is expected to become tired of sense gratification, and he should think about liberation. So these are the four goals of material life, religion, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. However, we see in the Kali Yuga that religion is practically forgotten and people, nobody's interested in liberation and all everyone wants is economic development for their sense gratification. Sense gratification means eating, sleeping, mating, defending. So Srila Prabhupada explains actually a pure devotee, he doesn't want these kind of things. So a pure devotee like Prahlad, he's not interested in any, any of these perfections because he's getting happiness from Krishna consciousness. And happiness from Krishna consciousness is so great and so transcendental and so unlimited that there's no happiness to compare to it. So one drop of happiness in Krishna consciousness is much greater than an ocean of happiness from any other kind of activity. In other words, you may get happiness from your sense gratification in the material world, but that happiness is nothing compared to the happiness of devotional service. Just like animals, like pigs and dogs, you know, they're also getting happiness. They eat and they sleep and they mate and they defend. But we don't want to have happiness like them. We want to have the higher happiness. We don't want happiness like these pigs and dogs. But if your happiness is just eating and sleeping, then that happiness is just like the pigs and the dogs. So Prabhupada explains that if someone has developed 
a little bit of devotion, if he's developed pure devotion, even a little bit, then it's very easy for him to give up all other kinds of happiness. Yeah, happiness, what people think is happiness, their happiness is, we say, religion, economic development, sense gratification and liberation. Their liberation is to merge, to become one, to enter into the Brahma Jyoti, oneness, not to engage in devotional service, but just simply to enter into the Brahma Jyoti and merge, become one. So that kind of happiness is very small compared to the happiness of devotional service. We want to bring everyone to understand what is the real platform of happiness. So we're giving some examples about great devotees, how they were experiencing happiness. So it's explained there was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya whose name was Kolavecha Kola Vecha Sridhar. So Kolavecha Sridhar was a very poor man. He had a small business. He was keeping the only thing he had for business. He had some little piece of land and he had a few banana trees. So he was using the banana trees to from the leaves of the ba ba banana trees, he was making cups and he was selling these cups. So his cup, the, the banana cups, you know, they don't sell for very much money. Just like if you're selling banana plates, banana leaf plates, leaf plates, you have to have a lot of banana leaves before you can get make any money. They don't sell for much price. And this Sridhar was, he only had a few banana trees, so he didn't have much income. But whatever money he would make in his business, he would always spend 50% to worship Mother Ganga. Ganges. And with the rest of the money, the other 50%, he would use that to maintain his life. And 
she weep. So he was living very poor. He had a house which was not well repaired. It was had holes in the roof. And his cloth was old. He didn't have any nice new cloth. And he didn't have any proper paraphernalia. He had an old iron pot at which he kept outside the door of his house, which he used to wash his feet. So, Lord Chaitanya one time called Sridhar and he told Sridhar, you can ask anything from me what you want. Just ask whatever benediction you would like and I will give you. Lord Chaitanya was sitting on the altar and he was showing to the devotees that he is actually not different from Krishna. Now, Lord, when Lord Chaitanya was a young boy, he used to go regularly to the home of Srira and he would buy some bananas from him. But Lord Chaitanya would, would always argue with Sridhar and say, oh, you're charging too much, your price is too high, you have to give me a lower price. And Sridhar would say, no, I'm giving you the same price as everyone. It's a fair, very fair price. And Lord Chaitanya would say, no, you're treating me and I'm a Brahmana. And so this is very bad for you. You will get punished for cheating a Brahmana. And Lord Chaitanya would always argue and argue, go on arguing, and finally Sridhar would just say, all right, all right, just take the bananas, just go, just go, just take them. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya, he had a special rasa, a special dealings with Sridhar. But the other devotees, they didn't know about Sridhar. So Lord Chaitanya told them about Sridhar, where he's living, and he said, go and tell him to come here. I want to give him some benediction. And Shridhar, when Sridhar came, then the Lord was telling Sridhar, ask, what can I give you? Would, would you like wealth? Would you like... Uh, would you like to have more land? Would you like to have some position in the society? In, in the in society, what would you like from me? Uh, 
ป็นที่รู้จักของทุกคนอยากเป็นคนดังหรือว่าอยากจะได้อะไรในชีวิตบอกค่ะมาสิ But she just said no. I don't want anything. I'm very, I'm quite happy with my life. I'm, I'm, I don't need anything from you. แต่เดนฮันสรีดาวเนี่ยก็จะบอกว่าความจริงแล้วเนี่ยผมก็ค่อนข้างมีความสุขดีกับชีวิตความเป็นอยู่ของผมผมไม่ได้ต้องการอะไรจากท่านเลยครับ And then s h i d e r said, "If you like to give me something, then give me faith and devotion to your lotus feet." So this is the pure devotee like s h i d a r that they're. Every day they're engaged in chanting the holy name, and they're so happy. They don't want anything else. And they don't even want liberation from the world. They don't want to become one with Krishna. What do they want? They just want devotional service. All right, and then another example is given from the Narada Pancharatra, where it is said that any person. Who has done even a little bit of devotional service, then they don't care about material happiness. ในนาราดาพันชราตระได้กล่าวไว้ว่าผู้ใดที่ปฏิบัติการโดยตนเสียสละรับใช้แม้เพียงนิดเดียวจะไม่สนใจกับความสุขใดๆที่จะได้รับจากการปฏิบัติทางศาสนา Yeah, they don't care about happiness from religion or economic development. Or sense gratification or liberation. And they don't even care about any of the five kinds of liberation. Not just becoming one. They don't care about even the four other kinds of devotional service. So the uh, this other kind of happiness, like material happiness or the happiness from liberation, this cannot even go into the heart of the pure devotee. Then, happiness. จากการปฏิบัติศาสนาอื่นๆหรือว่าจากการพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจหรือการสนองประสาสัมพัทธ์อะไรต่างๆนี้เนี่ยสิ่งเหล่านี้เนี่ยมันไม่ได้เข้าไปในจิตใจของสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์ The hearts of the pure devotees are so clean and so pure they have no thought of material desire. สาวกจิตใจของสาวผู้บริสุทธิ์เนี่ยมันบริสุทธิ์มากจนมันไม่มีแนวความคิดของโลกวัตถุนี้อยู่เลย So the, it is said that all the maid servants, the personal servants of a queen, just like a queen, she has many ladies who are serving her, waiting on her. And so, said all the servants of the queen, they will follow the queen wherever the queen goes. They will go with the queen. ได้กล่าวไว้ว่าเหมือนกับสนมรับใช้ของพระราชินีที่เวลาพระราชินีจะไปไหนเนี่ยพวกนางสนมพวกนี้ก็จะเดินตามไปด้วยทุกที And wherever the queen goes, people are all giving her respect and offering obeisances to her, and so the maid servants they are going with the queen, and it's like people are also respecting all the servants also. แล้วก็จากการที่เขาเนี่ยไปทุกที่ที่ที่แบบว่าพระราชินีไปที่ไหนทุกคนก็จะแสดงความเคารพทุกคนก็จะให้สิทธิพิเศษอะไรอย่างเงี้ยทำให้พวกที่ติดติดไปกับพระราชินีนี้ด้วยเนี่ยนางสนมเนี่ยก็จะได้รับ
So the the same way, wherever the devotee goes, the devotee, the happiness of the devotee will follow the devotee, that he will get happiness, he'll get happiness, just like other people get happiness from sense grat economic development and sense gratification. So in the same way, the devotees will also get that happiness without thinking about it. The pure devotee doesn't want anything except service to Krishna. And even if the devotee maybe have maybe needs something, then Krishna will arrange it. The devotee doesn't have to ask Krishna. Because Krishna knows everything. He knows about the position of every devotee. You don't have to tell him. So the devotee only wants service to Krishna, birth after birth. Alright, so we'll, we'll go ahead to the next section to hear about the rareness of pure devotional service. Right, we heard about the happiness of in devotional service, how there's the greatest happiness. Now we're going to hear also that it's very rare that we can do pure devotion service. It's not so easy because we are attached, we are conditioned to material life. We talk about devotional service, but our devotional service is very mixed with our material desire. We need to wait for to achieve pure devotional service. It doesn't come easy. It can take a long time. So Prabhupada explains here that he says, in the beginning of spiritual life, we do different kinds of austerities and penances. And we will do these different things. Our purpose is we want to become self-realized. So in the beginning, when we first come to Krishna consciousness, we, we accept some austerities and we undergo penance, we do fastings on the holy days, we may do fastings and we may do more chanting and we may, may, we, we may do austerity like sleeping on the floor instead of sleeping in a soft bed. And 
And then you want to also wake up early in the morning, it's a little austerity. So sometimes we do these things in the beginning of our Krishna consciousness. We want to become self-realized, we want to advance. So, if we do these things, like we do austerities and penances, if we do them without any material desire, but still we may not be able to do devotional service. And if we try to do devotional service just simply on our own, alone, that's also not good. Krishna doesn't give devotional service to just anybody. Krishna can, he prefers to give people material, their material desires, give them material happiness. And Krishna can easily give them liberation, but he doesn't easily give them devotional service. So devotional service is only given through the mercy of a pure devotee. Without the mercy of the pure devotee, you cannot get the mercy of Krishna. So we want to get Krishna's mercy, you have to get the mercy of the pure devotee, and he will help you get the mercy of Krishna. So then there's a quote from the Tantra Shastra where Lord Shiva is speaking to his wife Sati. And Lord Shiva is telling his wife Sati about how rare devotional service is. So Lord Shiva says to his wife Sati, he said, somebody may be a very good philosopher and they can analyze all the different processes of knowledge. So that person may be able to get liberation from the material existence. And he may do the ritual the rituals which are told in the Vedas, and he may get elevated to the platform of heaven to be very pious. And that way he is able to enjoy the comforts of material life. But 
Even though he may have all these comforts of material life, he won't get devotional service. He may do many rituals and sacrifices, but that won't get him devotional service. And he may do these activities for many, many lives, many, many years, births, but he won't get devotional service. So this way Lord Shiva is telling you how rare it is to get devotional service. And then there's another quote from the Srimad, ba Srimad Bhagavatam by Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj is saying that if you just make your own effort to, uh, or you may, you, he said you may make your own effort or you may do it by getting instructions from, from other people. But either way, you won't be able to come to the stage of devotional service. It doesn't matter if you try on your own or you do it by the help of others. You won't get devotional service. <laughs> And the only way you get devotional service is when you get the blessing, when you get the dust of the lotus feet of the pure devotee. And that person, that pure devotee, has to be completely free from all material desires. So if you get the blessings of that kind of persons, then you, you may get devotional service. And then another example is given from the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, sixth chapter, verse 18, where Narada Muni is speaking to Maharaj Yudhisthira. Yeah. No, Maharaj Yudhisthira. Oh, Maharaj Yudhisthira. Narada Muni says oh, to Maharaj Yudhisthira. So Narada Muni says to Maharaj Yudhisthira, he said, It is Lord Krishna, who is also known as Makunda, who is the eternal protector of the Pandavas and the Yadus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yadu, so Lord Krishna has many names and Makunda is one of Krishna's names. Makunda means one who can give mukti, liberation. Lord Krishna can give liberation. Uh, 
ซึ่งมุกุนดาเนี่ยเป็นอีกชื่อหนึ่งของปริชาซึ่งมีความความหมายว่าผู้ที่สามารถให้ความหลุดพ้นได้ These uh, sometimes people think that uh, only uh, the, 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 they don't. People don't always understand how Krishna can have so many names because all of these different names describe the different qualities of Lord Krishna. So Narada Muni is describing how Lord Krishna protects not only the five Pandavas and their family like Drupadi and Kunti, but he also protects the Yadus. Then the Yadu dynasty, so all the Yadus, they're his family members. And the Pandavas are friends with the Yadus, they help each other. So there's a very close relationship between the Pandavas and the Yadus, they're both devotees. And Lord Krishna takes care of both them, both the Yadus and the Pandavas. And Narada Muni tells Maharaj Yudhisthira that he is also, he meaning Lord Krishna, is also your spiritual master and instructor in every respect. Maharaj Yudhisthira is older than Lord Krishna, so Lord Krishna would come and he would touch the feet of Maharaj Yudhisthira and he would also bow to Bhima. Because Bhima is also older than Krishna. But Krishna was the same age as Arjuna. They would be equal and they would embrace each other. And Nakula and Sahadev, they are the younger Pandavas, they would come and bow to Krishna. So even, even though we see that uh, Krishna is younger than Maharaj Yudhisthira, still Narada Muni said, He is your spiritual master. So the spirit disciple. The money said that he is the only worshipable God for you, meaning he meaning worship. You don't have to worship any other gods. You see, sometimes people worship many gods, but Narayana. And Narada Muni says, Lord Krishna is very dear to you and very affectionate to you, and he is the director of all your activities. Lord Krishna is in the heart of everyone of us. Lord Krishna is in the heart of everyone of us. 
And Narada Muni says he directs not only our activities as an individual person, but also as family members, all of our activities in the family. And then Narada Muni has something really very wonderful and he says that he sometimes carries out your orders. He's telling Maharaj Yudhisthira, sometimes Krishna takes orders from you, just as if he were your messenger. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, that look, and Narada Muni says to Maharaj Yudhisthira, he said, you are so fortunate because for all of these favors given to you by Krishna, you could never think of, you could never even dream of them. <laughs> Yeah, Lord Krishna took personal care of the Pandavas, just like in the battle of Kurukshetra. There were many occasions when their lives were in danger, but Lord Krishna protected them. There were 100 sons of Dhritarashtra. They were all killed in the battle of Kurukshetra. But the Pandavas were not harmed. They survived. And so Maharaj Yudhisthira became the ruler. He ruled the entire world. And Lord Krishna is going as a messenger sometimes on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira. So we should just try to understand how very fortunate Maharaj Yudhisthira was. But we should understand this doesn't happen to many people. This was very, very special. Krishna easily gives liberation to somebody. But he may not, he doesn't give devotional service so easily. He won't give devotional service. He's, he's not going to give devotional service because he knows if he gives devotional service, he becomes controlled by that devotee. Just like Mother Yashoda, she could tie up Krishna. And Arjuna, Krishna became his chariot driver. So Krishna becomes the servant of his devotees. Krishna, the client, Konrapchai, 
So it's very rare to get devotional service. So if someone has got devotional service, they should be understood to be very, very fortunate. All right, we will stop here. We will ask if there's any questions. Yes, Gurmash. From Rajendra. Uh huh. Hari Hari Krishna Maharaj, thank you. You came to the class. Thank you, Hari. Ah, my question is, my question is, ah, Feng Ai Service is joy. But we are not feeling the joy of the service right now because we are not feeling the joy of the service right now. Anartha. So, we feel the joy of the service right now, so we feel the joy of the service right now. So, in the case of the joy of the service, we can do the joy of the service right now. We can do the joy of the service right now, but we don't feel the joy of the service. So, Rajendra Prabhu's question is that Devotional service is happiness. There's a lot of pleasure in devotional service. But at the, this moment, we may not be experiencing devotional service. So is this because of our anarthas? Is this anarth we have to destroy the anarthas? And how, how are we meant to maintain devotional service in order to get the real happiness? When we're not getting the happiness, how can we maintain devotional service? Because we're not getting any happiness just now. ทำทางของโปรดีนะคะถามว่าตรงนี้เนี่ยบอกว่าการวิจิตรเสียสละใช้เนี่ยให้ความสุขกับเรามากไปบ้างสารแต่ว่าอาจจะตอนที่เราป
เราก็มีความสุขจากรสชาติของอาหารทิพย์หรือว่าเราทำเกตตันเนี่ยเราก็มีความสุขกับการร้องเพลง Of course, there's the the greatest happiness there when we develop love for Krishna when we come to the platform of Baba and we get free from all the anattas then we will experience the highest happiness. เราจะมีความสุขในระดับสูงสุดได้ก็เมื่อเราเนี่ยพยายามพัฒนาความรักต่อคุชนาพยายามพัฒนาความรู้สึกและการริตนต่อพระองค์เมื่อเรามาอยู่ในระดับบาว So that kind of happiness that is rarely achieved it's not so easy to come to that stage of happiness นั่นเป็นความสุขประเภทที่หาได้ยากมากไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่แบบหาอย่างนี้ But there is still there some happiness in engaging in devotional service. And we have to keep hearing, we have to keep hearing the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, and we have to understand that we may not have come to the highest level of devotional service yet, but in the future. We can go on to come to that level of pure devotion and experience that highest happiness. ถึงแม้ตอนนี้เนี่ยเราอาจจะยังไม่ได้พัฒนามาถึงระดับนั้นแต่ว่าเราก็ควรที่จะฟังเกี่ยวกับความการพัฒนาในชีวิตแบบนี้ไปเรื่อยๆเพื่อที่วันหนึ่งเนี่ยเราจะพัฒนามาได้แล้วก็มาถึงระดับนั้นได้ในวัน The example is given just like the mango. The mango is green. But gradually, the mango becomes ripe, and as the mango becomes ripe, it becomes so sweet and so nectarian. เหมือนการกับมะม่วงมะม่วงเนี่ยเมื่อมันถึงเวลาของมันมันสุกพอดีแล้วเนี่ยเวลาเวลาเราไปกินมันมันแบบสุกพอดีมันก็จะหวานช่ำอร่อย So similarly with our devotional service. Our devotional service may not; it's not so ripe yet. But the the fruit is there. The, we're we're on the path, and we're following the right process. We just have to continue. We just have to keep going. And in course of time, gradually, we will come to that higher level and experience that higher happiness, that highest happiness. Ah, uh, we're like the way of doing it. เราก็กำลังปฏิบัติอยู่เราก็เหมือนเราก็เหมือนกับมะม่วงที่กําลังจะเจริญเติบโตอยู่แต่มันแค่ยังไม่ได้สุกแค่นั้นเองเราก็ปฏิบัติไปเรื่อยๆเนี่ยสิ่งที่เราจะต้องทําก็คือเราก็ต้องทํามันไปอย่างต่อเนื่องหรือว่าทํามันไปเรื่อยๆแล้วเมื่อแล้วเมื่อถึงเวลาเนี่ยวันหนึ่งเราก็จะสุกพอดี Alright so there's another question there Yes ก็มาฟังชายา Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and our Pandam, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Sri Lanka Bhopal. Um, Ajana, ha. He is on site in um Narada Panjarata. He said that uh, there is a gap in the five things. Ha. อยากจะทำกรุมารัตว่าความหลุดพ้นทั้งห้าอย่างเนี่ยคือมีแบบไหนบ้างอ่ะเจอไหม It's a part of the five kind of liberation, g u r m a r a j So what are those? What are the five kinds of liberation? Yes. Okay. First of all, to become one with the supreme. อันแรกก็คือการเป็นหนึ่งเดียวกับองค์พระขวาย Then to live on the same planet with the Lord. And to be an associate of the Lord. To have to have the same bodily features as the Lord. And to enjoy the same opulences as the Lord. Mm-hmm. So a devotee, a devotee, 
usually he will never accept the happiness of becoming one with the Supreme because there's no hope to do devotional service. But the, the, four, the other four kinds of devotional service, they may be acceptable by a devotee, but he doesn't desire them. But if Krishna, if Krishna puts him in that position, then he will take it. He, of course, whatever he goes wherever Krishna wants him to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Understand, Chai? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Can we have the same form like the Lord? Yes, you can have forearm form like the Lord. And all the people in Vaikuntha, they all have four arm forms. But there's, there's only some difference, small difference. There's one hair on the chest of the Lord. So that's a special hair. It's not on any, anybody else's chest. Uh, and there's a special jewel also called Kastuba, which is only worn around the neck of the Lord. So often when devotees first go to Vaikuntha, they don't know who is the Lord because everyone looks like the Lord. And they, all, they all have four arms and they look very nice. Okay. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for your explanation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vaishnavi has Vaishnavi. a question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance as all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we read about Kolavecha Sridhar. He was a very poor man. Uh, if we become poor, uh, then uh, is it like we should not try to improve our economic condition? Um, because uh, uh, we will be bothered about how to maintain the family and if we are very poor then we cannot invite devotees to give them prasadam. Uh, it can be how to take this Guru Maharaj. So Kolaveka accepted everything. Kolaveka Sridhar, he accepted everything as his karma. He explained when Lord Chaitanya asked him to ask a benediction, he said, no, I just want to continue as I'm doing. He said, I have my karma, it's my karma to be like this. Mm -hmm. 
เป็นเพราะว่ากรรมที่ผมเคยทํามาทําให้ผมเนี่ยต้องมารับอย่างนี้ผมก็โอเค And he said, "The bird lives in its nest in the tree, and the king lives in his palace." He said, "Everyone has different karma." So Sri Dar said, "I have my karma. It's my karma not to have a lot of wealth." But I'm very happy. I chant the holy name and I worship Mother Ganges with whatever income I get, fifty percent. I always use to worship Mother Ganga. I said, "This is from the karma of the person who wants to get this. But the karma is always there. 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 This is my happiness. So we see devotees like that. That when they're offered some benediction, they don't want anything. Pralat Maharaj was also offered benediction by Pralat Maharaj by Lord Nasringadev, and Pralat said, "No, I'm not a businessman." I didn't worship you just to get some benediction. เหมือนการกับปรามาราชที่ตอนที่ตอนนี้พองจันทร์สิงห์คือแบบพึงพอใจมากมากแล้วบอกว่าจะเอาอะไรอยากได้อะไรท่านก็จะบอกว่าข้าไม่ได้จะอยากได้อะไรเพราะข้าไม่ได้เป็นนักธุรกิจที่จะทำอันนี้เพื่อท่านแล้วก็ให้ท่านมาจ่ายมาทำอันนี้เพื่อข้า So these are very great devotees, very advanced stage of devotional service. They have no material desires. If Krishna wants to, if Krishna wants to give them wealth, of course they may accept it. But if Krishna doesn't give them wealth, they don't complain. And they don't ask Krishna to. Well, even when Krishna asks them, "Is there anything you need?" They don't ask. Just like Sudama went to Dwarka, he didn't ask Krishna for anything. But Krishna gave him everything. So Sudama accepted everything in the mood of renunciation, not for his own enjoyment, but for the service of Krishna. And we see Lord Chaitanya's prayers also. Lord Chaitanya's Shikshasti come prayers. He said, "I don't want wealth. I don't want followers. I don't want honor and respect. I just simply want devotional service, birth after birth." <laughs> So we may say, well, why don't we ask money? Then we can use it for devotional service. But devotional service doesn't depend on material things. It doesn't depend on having money. You can do devotional service without money. So a devotee doesn't like to take service from Krishna. He likes to give service to Krishna. So, 
It's not the business of a devotee to ask Krishna to give, to take from Krishna. Devotees like to give everything to Krishna. Okay. Rajendra has another question, is it? Rajendra? Yes, Maharaj. There are three questions from Chinese devotees. Okay. Uh, the, the first question from Xi'an Zhen Zhen. Uh, Hare Krishna, my dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my obeisances at your sweet lotus feet and my obeisance to all the devotees. My question is, uh, among the four basic uh, principles, there is the one is uh, it, there should not have uh, illicit sex because illicit sex can destroy the cleanliness. What's the meaning cleanliness? It's referred to impure desire. So would you please explain to me? Thank you. Uh,刺下基本原则非法性生活会破坏洁净。这里的洁净指的是不纯洁的欲望吗？不是特别清楚，请咕噜对这个原则讲一下。感恩咕噜。Well, there is cleanliness both uh, internally and other words in the mind. And there's also cleanliness externally, physically, in the body. Archana. So illicit sex can be both gross and subtle. It means that within our mind we may be thinking about enjoying the opposite sex. So that is subtle. Our mind becomes contaminated by thinking in this way. And then the actual physical act of sex, that's gross, that's, so that contaminates the body as well as the mind. Of course, we're talking about illicit sex, but there is sex also according to religious principles. And when, we, when people do sex according to religious principles, that is purifying. People will do the Garbhadan Samskar and they will chant Hare Krishna 50 rounds and they will have, try to have a Krishna conscious child. So to have a good child, to give up, to give birth to a good child, this is one of the duties of a, a woman. They should give birth to a nice child and bring the child up in Krishna consciousness. But if one engages in a sex which is not according to religious principles, they may become contaminated. Okay. 
Right. What's the other question? Hi, you want to regender? Uh, the second question from Nityananda Ramda. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Ripley, Abhi Maha, Moses, and Ajala to speak. What's the difference between the Bhakti uh, and Prima? What's the relationship between Bhakti and Prima? Well, bhakti is, the, we're talking about the process of bhakti yoga. Now, there's a process of bhakti yoga, the different stages of bhakti. We're hearing, for example, today about sadhana bhakti, and then bhava bhakti, and then prema bhakti. So, so, there are different levels of bhakti, devotional services. But prema bhakti, prema is, means love of God. It's the highest level of bhakti to experience love of God. Prem is a quality, it's only in the spiritual world it's it's a very rare thing here in the material world we only we speak about love in the material world but love in the material world is not real love it is simply lust but real love is prem <laughs> So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to say that uh, the goal of life is to de develop prem, prem punato mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God love of Krishna. Prem means to love Krishna. And bhakti means devotion to Krishna. So devotion can be on many different levels. And the perfection of devotion is prema. Yes. Shall I give one, one more question? Yeah, the, the, the last question is from Xiang Xiang Yan Tai. My obsession is to Guru. Still, devotional serv service is rare to obtain. In SP 6.325, emphasized among the million of a million of the perfect liberated souls, it's very hard to find to find a pure one pure devotee. It is it very difficult for us to attend the pure devotional service? Is it very difficult? Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have we have to answer. These are very rare. We say that it is have the human body. So to have the human body is very rare. And of those people who have a human body, it's very rare to get the association of devotees are very rare. And of those who've got the association of devotees, then they're saved. That is the idea. So we're, we're all fortunate because we've got the association of devotees. Archana? <laughs> การวิทยาศาสตร์จะได้จากการที่เราเนี่ยพบอาสมาคมกับเก่าผู้บริสุทธิ์ซึ่งอันนั้นเนี่ยมันมีมันเป็นโอกาสที่น้อยมากๆแ
ของประชาชนด้วยเช่นการที่จะทําให้เราเนี่ยได้มีโอกาสในการพบหาสมาคมกับเสาผู้บริสุทธิ์พอแล้วโอกาสตรงนั้นเนี่ยมันก็จะทําให้เราเนี่ยพัฒนาความรักต่อพระองค์ไปได้ So we're very fortunate to get the Association of Devotees. We should take advantage of the Association of Devotees to become better, to improve our devotional service, and to come to the perfectional stage. You're already fortunate. You just have to become even more fortunate. Okay, Hare Krishna. Any other questions here, Archana? No more, Gurudev. Okay, so thank you very much for your translation. Thank you, Gurudev. We thank also the Chinese devotees for their questions. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Chai. Yeah. Go back to the Ki Chai. Yeah.